Hey, what's up, everybody? Mark Price here at DevSlopes.com, and today you are going to learn what I think is the most important thing that a developer could know in their programming career, and that is web requests. And and rather, we're going to talk about what they are and how they work because everything you do as a developer, for the most part, is going to have web requests from from games to to everything you can think of. And uh, for some contexts, there are plenty of apps that you're using right now that use web requests all the time from clash of clans to Facebook. Okay. Everything is using web requests. And so we're going to talk today about what a web request is. And let's start off by going to our handy dandy browser, Google Chrome. And if I go to google.com, we see a, we see a website here loaded up, looking all pretty. We don't think twice about what's going on under the hood and things like that. And maybe you're thinking, well, um, I'll just right click and go to, you know, view page source, be like, you know, here's some stuff. Isn't this a web request? No, this is not, not necessarily. This is not a web request. This is just HTML, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What is a web request? What is happening? How does your computer talk to another computer and get browser information and images and things downloaded to your website? How does this all work? And uh, let's talk about that now. If I go to my terminal, all right, and I type in curl, it's a, it's a command line based, uh, uh, tool for uh, doing web requests, and I type in http slash slash google dot com. Oops, look at this. Well, this is perfect, perfect example. Okay, so it sent me back this HTML. Wait a minute, what's the difference between what I'm getting here in my terminal and what I just got on the Google website? What's the difference? Well, that's a good question. Uh, What's interesting is there's a server involved delivering things to a client. So this terminal here is a client asking the server for some data. In this case, the server returns HTML, but the terminal does not know how to process it versus when I go to Google Chrome and I load up google.com, this browser knows how to process the data that the server's sending back. So the server is sending back the same data. Okay, except in this case, the browser knows how to process this. This is a client and the client knows how, whereas this terminal does not know how. So it's just sending data back to us. Uh, it doesn't necessarily matter uh, who's asking for the data and the, the client, which is this terminal here or the browser, just interprets it however it wants to. It uses that data for its own advantage. So let's talk about how that works. So this is my little drawing pad here in Photoshop. And yes, you know, I know what's going to happen. A bunch of you are going to be like, why are you using Photoshop? You could be using this tool and this tool and that tool and that tool. And oh my gosh, well, I'm using Photoshop. So get over it. Okay. So client, what is a client? What is a, oh, a web request, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you've probably seen this before. HTTP. You type it in your browser, right? HTTP www.mywebsite.com. What is this? What does this even mean? Okay. It stands for hyper text transfer protocol. And, and when you think about a protocol, it's a protocol is really a standard, right? And so what this means is when a website has a URL of HTTP, it means this website is abiding by the HTTP protocol, meaning we're going to send requests from clients to the server via this uh, hypertext transfer. Okay, we're going to send data through text through the internet. Okay, and we're going to send it from client to server. That's what this means right here. So let's take a step even further. So we got our clients here, right? So we've got uh, we've got our iPhone. You know, we've got our nice little Android phone. You know, with the little hardware buttons. You know, and then we got our broken junk uh, Windows phone. You know, there we go, because it only works half the time and. Uh, who owns a Windows phone? Uh, anyway, so we got these clients, right? But there's more. We've got a web browser, right, on a computer. That's a client as well, too. You know, a little web browser. Okay. And then what we have is we've got somebody's website. So let's say, um, you know, www.devslopes.com, right? This is a website. And devslopes.com has content hosted. Well, that's kind of a that's kind of the icon for a database. Well, we're going to just call this our server, though. Has content hosted on a server, all right? And so the client needs to go to devslopes.com. So they type in these clients type in. I'll do it here. You know, they type in devslopes.com, and they press enter. Well, what's happening? 
Okay, well, this is what's happening. Coming from these clients over here, it is sending a request to a specific address on the internet, devslopes.com, very specific URL. And in what it is doing, it is, in our case here, sending an HTTP request, okay? Sending an HTTP request, namely something called a GET request, okay? It is asking a server to deliver something back. So these clients, they go to the server, and the server takes this connection using the HTTP protocol, so using this GET request, uh, and the, the GET request is saying, hey, we want data, we want to load this web page, okay? There's, there's text and all kinds of cool things built inside this request that you don't ever see as a user. It's all in here, uh, encapsulated in this HTTP request, and it goes over to the server, and the server can choose to deny it, or accept it, or accept it and send it back. In this case, our server's gonna accept it, that's a little check mark here, looks good to me, and then it's gonna send back its own uh, response using the HTTP protocol okay so this is going to be a response to a get request and the response is going to come with a few things a response is going to come with something called headers okay these are these are things you don't typically see under the hood like that that kind of define uh, the the parameters or the the rules or, or packets of data that are attached to the specific um, request and then it's going to have what's called the body okay in the response and typically uh, you're going to see a body that's in json format okay json or it could be xml uh, you're seeing a lot less usage of xml these days and uh, pretty much everybody's using json for the most part uh, and so json and so what happens is all of the data is back in the json so in this case the server's like all right web browser I'm going to send you back the HTML for uh, our website so your browser can display it. So the server is sending back HTML and the, the, the data that's needed to render this page, and that's going to be stuck in the body. So then what happens is your client, it gets the response and says, okay, we're just receiving HTML. Let's use our browser to display it on the web page. So in this case, this HTTP request is sending back HTML and the clients are displaying it in the browser. The browsers know what to do with it because the smart people who coded the browsers, uh, they built code that allows these, those browsers to visually take text and represent it in a browser. So if you've ever, ever written you know, an HTML tag, you know, and then you know, your headers and your body actually in the HTML and you've ever written some simple code like that, your browser's taking that texture writing and it's uh, making a visual picture out of it. And that's what its job, that's what its job is to do. Okay, but there's more. It doesn't have to be uh, an HTML request uh, to show in a browser. Let's say that an app, okay, let's say the app, uh, well, let's say this is the DevSlopes app, which at the time of recording uh, is under development, but almost there. But let's say we've got the DevSlopes app. In fact, I'll do it down here. So this is the DevSlopes app, okay? And a user wants to see a list of videos they can watch, okay? Let's say they're in an iOS course. They're in an iOS course and they wanna watch some videos. One, two, three, four, five, okay? Well, the videos, they're not on the iOS device because if we were to put all the videos on the device itself in the app, the app would be thousands of megabytes and we wouldn't be able to load it on the app store. So what's gonna happen instead is the DevSlopes app, uh, in our case, uh, we're talking to the Firebase server, okay? But I'm just gonna call it a server anyway. It doesn't matter. Um, let's just server in general. So the iOS app, okay, it does a GET request. And it does it to a specific URL. So it's like iOS course slash video. So maybe it's devslopes.com uh, slash iOS course slash videos. I know that's crummy handwriting, right? But it's, it sends it to a specific URL. So that's the GET request. And so the server's like, okay, you know what? I just so happen to have a list of videos at that specific URL. So the server in this case is gonna send back a response, like so, okay, response using the HTTP protocol. This is all HTTP. Uh, it's gonna send back a response and in the JSON, the JSON body, you know, it's gonna have, uh, for instance, something like uh, video one URL, you know, video two URL, maybe like video one title. 
So all the data needed for the video, so like the title, how long it is, the URL of where the video is, and it's gonna send it back to the iOS app. Now this time, we're not parsing, uh, we're not parsing the JSON uh, and uh, getting, um, excuse me, not JSON, we're not parsing the request back and it's not, HT, it's not HTML. Okay, it's not gonna show up in a browser. In this case, um, the iOS app needs to take that data and display it in its own little table cells. You do the same thing on Android or other platforms. It'll all be displaying in the different cells. And so what we're gonna do this time is rather than rendering HTML, we're gonna grab this response, this text, and we're gonna load it up in the UI of this iOS app. Okay, and then when a the user taps on it, we have we now have the URL for the video, and then it goes to like the server and plays that video. And so these responses, these these get requests, they can send back different types of things from HTML to JSON with with data like this. But keep in mind, this is all text. Okay, these are all this is all just text going back and forth. Okay, um, it it also you know this can also send back um, like little packets of data for um, you know image downloading or video streaming and things like that. And and even though those those are video and stuff, um, they all still abide by the hypertext transfer protocol um, or different things like HTTP live streaming, um, they're, they're all capable of going back and forth in these different types of requests, which is, which is really cool. Um, and so we've got a get request, right? This is to get stuff, okay? What if though, this app right here, okay? Let's say this is still the DevSlopes app, all right? Let's say the DevSlopes app over here wants to, um, we wanna to post to the server that a user has completed a course. Okay, so we're going to do a new request. All right, we're going to do a new request to the server, except this time it's not a get request. We're doing a post request. Okay, and a post request is when you post something new. Okay, so we're saying, hey, we're saying add a record saying that this user has completed a course. Okay, so we this time we are going to create a JSON body. Okay, we're gonna create a JSON body with data in it, and it might say, you know, course ID, and then it might say uh, completed is equal to true, all right? And we send it up to the server in this post request. The server gets it, processes it. It probably stores it in a database somewhere. DB means database, so the server processes it there. The database says, okay, success. And so the server says, okay, success. And then it sends back a response. Even a post request can have a response. And so it sends back its own response. And you know, I'm just say RES for response. It says success. In this case, all it said was success. It could have sent back some more data, you know, an updated record, whatever. It can send back whatever it wants. When you're designing your own server, you can make it send back whatever you want, which is really cool. So a post request, which is really cool. That's how you create new things. You can also do something called a put request. And a put request is where you modify existing data. So in this case, Maybe the app saying, "Hey, the u a user in an app changed their first and last name. So change name, right? Change name. That's going to go in a JSON body, and the server is going to say, "Okay, they changed the name back to the database." Again, same exact thing, except we're updating it. And what's really crazy about the get and the put and the post? These are just standards. You don't actually have to obey the rules. We could have we could have did put stuff in the body of a get request and made this update something. We could have made it post something instead of getting something. Although that would be very confusing and your, your backend developers wouldn't like that very much or vice, excuse me, vice versa if your client developers wouldn't like it very much if the server was doing wacko things. So you wanna use the requests for what they're for. Uh, and the other common one is a delete request. You know, that's when you actually uh, delete a record or something like that. And so all this data is going back and forth from client to server. So now when you're thinking about it, anytime an app does something, it's a sports app getting data on the latest baseball game. Uh, it's hitting a server, the server's returning data, and the app's handling it. And it's it's all happening back and forth between client and server through the HTTP uh, protocol. And there's different protocols as well, too, um, that, that are out there. But this is obviously the most common, and this is what you'll be using for mobile development, uh, even on, uh, even on uh, web development as well, too. Um, you know, if you're using Angular or React, you'll, you'll, in your JavaScript, on your front end, which is the client, will talk to the server and make a HTTP request to download data, which will then come back to the browser as well too. So a browser on the internet doesn't mean back end server, okay? A browser is a client, just as a, a phone, a mobile phone is, and the server is what uh, takes those requests in and pumps out the data, sends back errors, and things like that. And uh, so this is like a 10,000 foot view of how HTTP works. You've got clients and servers. And so 
all I want you to understand out of this video is that it's not magic, okay? From now on, you know, when you're going to a website, you now know that there's something more going on. Uh, in, in fact, uh, you know, when, you're, when your friends come up to you and be like, you know, oh, you're a programmer, you'd be like, yeah, you know what? You probably just went to google.com, but did you realize there was HTTP requests going on underneath the hood and data being transferred from a server to a client, and your browser actually took that, handled the request, and it displayed the data? They're gonna be like, whoa, man, you're a nerd. Don't ever talk to me again. Uh, well, they may say that, but uh, at least, at least you're better for knowing this stuff. Uh, and so, uh, this is foundational stuff. Very important to know because uh, all the apps, uh, whether they're web or mobile of today, uh, they uh, they have to be smart and they have to work with data. And all that data is going to work with these with these requests here. And uh, taking it one step further, um, I'm just going to talk about this. I don't have any anything to draw for it, but um, your clients um, often have, uh, well, they have to work with sockets. Sockets are basically, uh, uh, the, the ins and outs of your, either your operating system or your, your device itself that actually lets the hardware send things through the network into packets. And so at a level lower than all these transfer requests, you've got, you've got the sockets that are actually allowing um, your device to take in data and put it out. And so those are, those go into it as well too. So I'm not covering that, but what, what I would love for you to do is to go on to uh, Wikipedia and research HTTP uh, and elsewhere too on the internet. Also look up how do sockets work in programming. Do a search for that on the internet and do some reading. Go educate yourself. Uh, you'll be glad that you did. Uh, this video is done. Uh, we're actually gonna be demonstrating this as uh, uh, in, in the videos, uh, and so you'll be able to see these things in action. But that's it for now. Mark Price at devslopes.com, the world of web, 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 the world of web requests are now in your hands. See you later.